Father, we come before you and we thank you for being our faithful God. We thank you that we can come together and worship. God, we ask that you will just bless the time now as we continue to look at um, textual contradictions and unravel them as we look at this particular issue. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. The controversy of the unpardonable sin. All right. We wet your whetted your appetite on Wednesday that this is where we're going the controversy of the unpardonable sin and uh, let's remind ourselves what is the unpardonable sin again the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit it better not be suicide <laughs> because let me see the hands of those when you grew up that's what you heard though let me see the I mean one of me one you know thank you all right that's what I, I, you know, and I grew up in church. But even church people were saying that the unpardonable sin is suicide, interestingly. And there's no such trace of that in scripture that it is the unpardonable sin. Others have also forged the other, <laughs> some other sins as unpardonable. But really, we need to stick to what God says and what God calls it. And so the unpardonable sin is this um, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. All right. So this is how we're going to do it. Um, we're going to again just read the the portions that speak to the unpardonable sin I mean just the few verses and the consequences of those who commit it and then we're gonna again just kind of flesh out what the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is the unpardonable sin then we're going to make a few more statements and then we're going to go back to the, the scriptures and the context to answer the question um, because it, it is quite clear as it says that those who do this um, will never be forgiven will be damned so to speak quite clear but we want to find out to make sure because people have made a debate about it about you know if what if a Christian does this are they going to be losing their salvation when we read over the context in its entirety we will see what the answer to that is so Matthew 12 we're just gonna read verse 31 and 32 for now and then we're gonna do mark 3 28 to 30 and then Luke 12 verse 10 is the only one that speaks to that in that one verse the others we will get back to in a bulk reading the entire context from 22 to 45 of Matthew 12 and 22 to 30 but Luke 12 10 is that that's just that one line one verse there things happening before and after they don't go into detail but Matthew goes into the most detail and then Mark and then it gets smaller in detail as we go along so let's Matthew 12 31 and 32 scripture says wherefore Jesus speaking I say unto you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men and verse 32 says and whosoever speaketh a word against the son of man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaketh against the holy ghost it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world neither in the world to come all right let's look at mark 3 28 to 30. mark 3 28 to 30 and you're there already brother chris lovely verily i say unto you all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men that includes suicide all right and blasphemy is where it where it's so ever they shall blaspheme next but he that shall blaspheme against the holy ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation next because they said he hath an unclean spirit now let's go to Luke 12 and verse 10. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. All right? So those are the verses that speak to that. But there are times when we would have said, and we have all now identified that the unpardonable sin is uh, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. But really, what is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Because sometimes we only can say that it is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But what is it? Br bring back the slide now, brother. So we're going to make sure we clarify what it is. All right? In a, so 
the controversy of the unpardonable sin. And uh, next slide, right. And so we have all come to the agreement that the unpardonable sin is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? It is malignantly ascribing to Satan what is known to be the work of the Spirit of God. Uh, this is when a person obstinately attributes the work of the Holy Spirit to that of the devil. It is like saying that Satan worked a miracle when one knows or should know that it is the Spirit. Example, this work is of the devil and not of the Holy Spirit. That's what somebody is saying, whether directly or indirectly, when they blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. All right? This work is of the devil, not of the Holy Spirit. All right? Next slide. We're still looking at what is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. All right? So, here the matter, in the, the, the verses we read, the matter is made clear beyond the smallest doubt that the unpardonable sin is ascribing the miracles that Christ worked by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, to the spirit of the devil. So, anyone who accuses Christ of being in league with Satan or that the works of of God are of the devil will never be forgiven all right so let's go back to Matthew chapter 12 and look at the context some of you know the context the story behind it but let's go back to Matthew chapter 12 and we're gonna begin now at verse 22 all right we're gonna begin at verse 22 so here is how it all started verse 22 says then was brought unto him which is jesus one possessed with a devil or a demon you know blind and dumb and he healed him jesus healed him meaning he cast out the devil you know cast out the demon in so much that the blind and the dumb both spake and saw and all the people were amazed and said is not this the son of david but when the pharisees heard it pay attention to the group of people to the pharisees when they heard it they said this fellow doth not cast out devils but by beelzebub the prince of the devils let's stop right there brother chris and everybody else let's clarify a few things who can tell me what beelzebub means what was that prince of prince of the demons satan himself that's another name for satan but you're not wrong sister fowler but i'm gonna make it even more graphic for you <laughs> i'm gonna make it even more graphic for you because don't you wonder why jesus found this so offensive in other words he, he literally said you can't say anything you want against me but not against the holy spirit so why did he take so much offense on behalf of the holy spirit because beelzebub really does mean prince of the of the the demons but let me remove the word demons are you using something else it means yeah, yeah 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 it means dung god god of dung god of filth god of doodoo Yeah, may, may I say it, Susan, sister, Susan, may I say it, so everybody, don't you look at children can understand, <laughs> feces, do, do, filth, you name it. Because Satan has different names, you know. And so, whatever name you use, and, 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 and Jesus has different names too, and names have meaning. So, they use a specific name, Sister Rena. If they wanted to, they could have said, um, this fellow cast out devils by Satan. Am I making sense? They never say Satan, although it means that it is Satan. But they said Beelzebub. So you ah. So Jesus took offense to that. The Holy Spirit takes offense to that. God takes offense to that. In other words, you are likening me to filth, and the Prince of filth. It means dumb God, God of filthiness, Prince of unclean spirits. No, you see why what's this that's that face <laughs> yeah no you see ah that's how the, that's the kind of face the holy spirit make up then too in other words so it's not just that it is satan it's the name that they have ascribed to in other words it's filthy 
power. And Jesus took offense to that. The Holy Spirit, you know, and Jesus spoke on behalf of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to know why this is so offensive. All right? Because he was ascribing all of that filthiness to the Holy Spirit's work. You know? So, verse 25. Let's keep going now. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Let's pause for a moment. Jesus, as may be said in another way, in another verse, a kingdom divided by itself cannot stand. So he says, in, a, in essence, if this were Satan for true, this would have never happened because anytime Satan's demons possess somebody, they are in there for as long as they can stay. Satan is not going to say to one of his demons, come out of him. They're going to be there. So in other words, he's saying, you should know better. It cannot be that this is in league with Satan because a kingdom divided by itself cannot stand. Satan wouldn't cast out Satan or Satan wouldn't cast out demons. He'd want him to stay there. So he says, you guys are really going the wrong direction with this one. And then verse 29 now says, Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he um, will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattered abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, and now he comes to the point here, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But this particular blasphemy, and guys, that's why I want us to get this. Because he says all manner of sin and blasphemy will be forgiven. But this particular one, that's why we have no business putting any other kind of sin or blasphemy as the unpardonable sin. He says this particular act, all right? this particular kind but the blasphemy against the holy ghost shall not be forgiven unto men and whosoever speaketh a word against the son of man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaketh against the holy ghost it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world neither in the world to come no since we're in the context we're going to stay there and we're going to unravel this part because the question then begs are these people saved or not? The, the group was what? Pharisees, right? The Pharisees were religious but not? Religious but not saved. But the context is also going to prove that these people are not saved. The question you are going to want to ask is, then, what if somebody else do? Not these group, the group of persons commit the sin. And what if that person is a Christian? We're going to answer that too. But you need to stick to the context which is telling you that these persons are not saved first. And then we'll answer that in a more um, emphatic way. So let's go. He says, either make the tree good and its fruit good. Or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. This is already going to get into something, you know. So it's either going to be that it's a good tree and good stuff come out or it's a bad tree and bad stuff come out. You are known by your fruits. And then what does he call them? Remember, who are these people? The Pharisees. Who are what? Religious but not saved. All of the descriptions he levies at these people clearly show they're not saved. They're religious but not saved. So we're coming to a point with that too. Oh generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of, his, out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure, sorry, out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. 
But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That last phrase, by thy words thou shalt be condemned, means in akin to the to verse 33 that says, For the tree is known by its fruit. It's your very words that will prove if you are a Christian or not. Christian people don't do this. By your fruits you shall know them. And if you had known better, isn't it another verse in the New Testament further down that says, Your spirit bear witness with each other that you are the children of God? And in other words, if they were children of God, they would have known that this was the work of the Holy Spirit. And he says it. It is that by your words, you shall be condemned. In other words, your words have not just condemned you and sent you to hell. No. But your words have proven that you are condemned. Your words have proven that you are not saved. You don't know God. Let's keep going. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. So they're trying to kind of deflect. And then he said, he answered and said unto them, an evil, in other words, you are an evil and adulterous generation who seeks, seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was, was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now watch this now. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it even those who got saved at Nineveh in a better position than these. That's what he's saying. All right? Because they repented. Who do not repent? Who do not know Jesus? Who do not know salvation? These are not people who are saved. These are people who don't know God even though they pretend to know God. Religious but not saved. Those are the most dangerous people. And if you know anything about scripture, which I know you know this, Jesus' vocabulary was strongest towards the religious but not saved. Not so. Not so. Was strongest to them. Because they're the most dangerous set. They're hypocrites. And he called them that. He called them vipers. Then he called them white sepulchers. So it's really just but not saved. Let's keep going here. All right? So let me, let me finish verse 41. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with the, the, this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here, which is him. Verse 42. We're going to verse 45. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to, to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, which is unclean spirit, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished in other words he's speaking to these people that listen if you are filled with the devil and you are not filled with the spirit when they if if, if somebody is cast out which is telling them that they are empty sepulchers there is no spirit of god in you and what is going to return is more evil spirit more unclean spirit because remember they said that he has a work with an unclean spirit so he's flipping the script to relate to what they have called the holy spirit and god's jesus's work verse um did i read verse 44 not yet right verse 44 then he said i will return into my house from whence i came out and when he is come he find it empty swept and garnished verse 45 then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation you might have wondered why I read so far, but now you see the conclusion of the matter. Every step, every illustration was always pointing that 
uno unsafe <laughs> uno no know god uno wicked and you guys are condemned and so anybody who does this don't know god because we're supposed to know the works of god and so we have to be careful what we say all right let's look at mark 3 verse 22 to 30 and then we'll open it up for um, discussion and comments mark 3 i'll read from my bible even if brother chris has it all right verse 22 to 30 remember the, the real context began earlier than verse 28 so we're going back at verse 22 and the scribes which came down from jerusalem said he hath beheld the bob <laughs> you, you know and, and I, I don't know if you realize how the, the, the language puts it maybe we should double check because i never and it's now just hitting me let me see what mark 12 31 says mark 12 31 say how they how they put it all right 12 31 i have my pages right there wherefore i know well let me go back to where did he uh, where did be all right verse 27 of mark 12 and the, no let me verse 24 but when the pharisees heard it they said this fellow doth not cast out devils but by beelzebub the prince of the devils mark 12 says jesus is doing this by the power of an unclean spirit but mark 3 did i say matthew did i say matthew or mark? matthew 12 says they said he's doing it by the power of an unclean spirit but now look at the language in mark 3 verse 22 and the scribe which came down from jerusalem said he has beelzebub and by the prince of the devils cast that he out devils it's not it, let me see if somebody's figuring it out now what's different with this language there's an added accusation now you're not seeing it thank you so the first one matthew says that some of them were saying that he's doing it by the power of an unclean spirit but no mark says not just the power but you have it too so them out of order them road but listen remember no you know jesus says that even if if if, if it were just him you're dissing but he'll forgive you now let him say he will forgive so even though they disrespected jesus they are saying that jesus is possessed himself and what he did, did this by the power of an unclean spirit jesus said me not even busy about my part but it's when you teach the holy spirit he's bringing prominence and importance and significance to the holy spirit because some people don't value him and recognize the holy spirit for years decades and millennia there are people who have called the holy spirit it like he's not a person and this was probably one of the places where they that even recognize because in, in another in another sense you know even though the old testament said and the spirit of god the spirit of god came upon Samson, and the spirit of god moved upon the waters this the holy spirit and the spirit of god was never anything new so they they would have known about it but remember that the holy spirit didn't come and live in people yet that dispensation was going to come right after christ so many people didn't regard him some didn't regard him i should say let me remove the word many and say some so they hear they here you have it verse 23 now and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables how can satan cast out satan and if a kingdom be divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand and if a house be divided against itself that house cannot stand and if satan rise up against himself and be divided he cannot stand but hath an end no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house verily i say unto you all sins shall be forgiven you forgiven unto the sons of men right and blasphemy is wherewith soever they shall blaspheme but he that shall blaspheme against the holy ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation all right let me 
and then verse 30 because they said he hath an unclean spirit two accusations but notice that mark becomes even more damning mark says last um second to last verse read 29 not just that you won't be forgiven but this person is in danger of eternal damnation the word in danger is one phrase from the greek word which means you are subject to damnation you're liable for damnation you shall be condemned and so anybody who does this is not saved the, 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 the debate ensues because we, we might want to ask what if a Christian does it because the Pharisees and the scribes are religious but they're religious but not saved anybody who does this doesn't have the spirit of God in them because the spirit of God would have made ah so that's it the, 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 we don't need to be asking and debating over what if a christian does this a christian will not do this and here's what i'm trying to say if you disagree with me fine if somebody does this they are proving they're not a christian they're only fake am i making sense so you say what if a christian does it if somebody calls himself a christian and does it he says in matthew your fruit shall prove your very mouth condemn you so you're not a christian that's what he means so anybody who does this is not a Christian. Not a Christian. That's as simple as it gets. And anybody who does this calling himself Christian have proven that they are not one. That's the answer to the whole thing, you know. Questions, comments? Are we good so far? All right. Oh, wonderful. We're doing well then, man. All right. Go back to the slide then, brother um, Chris. I think we only have about two more slides yeah, three more slides and so the consequences of such blasphemy know that we have settled this issue that it is anybody who does this is unsaved and anybody who claims to be saved and does this is proven they are unsaved let us remind um, what the consequences are N next slide next slide next slide all right so it says any person who is guilty of this kind of blasphemy will be unpardoned forever god will not forgive a sin so direct so presumptuous and so awful to call the holy spirit or even jesus himself <laughs> the, the the prince of filthiness eh? there is no possible circumstance in which this offender could find forgiveness none this sin is without excuse and would not be forgiven in their age when they are living or in the coming one this almost is almost and again this is speculation now i'm telling you when i'm speculating and imagining this one could very well be one that is put down you see and are already going to hell you know uh let me put it another way the lake of fire the final destination and we talked about the judgment the great white throne but I, I believe for instance if god is going to call up all of the works they did all of the evil things they did on the great white throne you see when this one you call sister Rena, this is a special one you know because god even has the authority to say that this one i hold it against you now and forever he never just said no until judgment you know he said he said i'm holding it against you for now and forever and so this one could very well merit a special special kind of judgment which i know not of but when somebody does something like this he's certainly going to punish them and judge them for it not sure because if he's going to judge them for everything else is it just that him going to have you up <laughs> he's going to judge you for it so the, it could very well be as many people believe that there are going to be degrees of punishment and this one seems like it is going to be the heights of punishment because there's a major consequence for it next slide the 
consequence of such blasphemy judgment shall overtake this offender both here and the hereafter uh, charles spurgeon put it this way he who is guilty of this outrageous crime i quote him i quote him so i'll use the word i won't change his wording but i would change it to sin <laughs> all right because it's not just crime it's definitely sin so he but because i'm quoting him i quote him word perfectly he who is guilty of this outrageous crime has sinned himself into a condition in which spiritual feeling is dead and repentance has become morally impossible by your words you condemn yourself anybody and, and so let's go the other way now they already are not saved you know so here's where i'm going with this one they already are not saved and if they bless him against the holy spirit no chance to get saved because their own mouth their own words have condemned them because there's a big blotch and blot on their name unpardonable sinner no chance of repentance remember you know the other portions say that if you have committed other sins and other blasphemies and even speak against jesus he say i'll forgive you so repentance is, is offered to anybody who does other kinds of sin no matter what but he said not to these <laughs> not to these wow sister grace wow <laughs> yeah any questions comments all right if not then we're going to wrap it up with this final quote from charles spurgeon again next slide next slide persons this is a lesson then anybody who is online hearing and you're unsaved listen carefully persons must be very careful in their conduct towards the holy ghost for his honor has a special guard set about it by such a solemn text as this how careful we ought to be to render all reverence and obedience to the holy spirit lest by grieving him we should be left to final condemnation so that's a warning to any unbelieving person be careful or you disrespect the holy spirit but remember now you know what can we do as christians we can grieve him we're not going to blaspheme but we can grieve him so let's apply it to us who are christians as well don't grieve the holy spirit amen go ahead so pastor you're saying that um once you a little louder for me <laughs> once you're saved right mm -hmm. you have a general discernment of the holy spirit it should dwell in you so mm -hmm. you must be you would, would be aware right um so you're saying if you because you remember you know you have people that, load of you still. have persons mm -hmm. who are what you say the cult or whatever cult. Mm -hmm. remember sometimes these persons are doing works mm -hmm. you know that we would say it's not the holy spirit but you can't just go and just judge who and who is and who because they do have false prophets and stuff yes. out there mm -hmm. so it's best to what to the spirit will t to tell you or whatever you you have to keep quiet and is it that you just you don't judge or oh i see what you i see what you mean i see what you mean that's a very good um very and uh, maybe because money was so soft in it you you might have missed the strength of the question that for instance devil workers the antichrist is going to do some work and so they are false prophets and sometimes there is a power that is emitted and things happen you know what if for instance you see something happening we have to be careful how we judge it and say you know a devil work or that but as you said we who are saved should also and would also have the spirit of god within us to actually like and and that's why i love it the spirit just tell me if you tell yourself <laughs> that's why we keep it at this one thing because you see when we start to go outside of other kinds of things we still miss the point in other words this is why it is easy to detect he says this is an unpardonable sin only this one 
when somebody, for instance, casts out a demon, it must be the work of God. So let's keep it to the one thing. Am I making sense? When somebody casts out a demon, it must be the work of God. It cannot be the work of the devil. So he said, even common sense should tell them that. that Satan will not be divided. So if we go with the other stuff, we're going to get in trouble. He said, any other stuff you see happening, we not talk about that. But if you see somebody cast out a demon and you're going to say, at the work of the devil, you're wrong altogether and not smart, you know, have no sense, and you're going to be condemned because Satan wouldn't do that. Am I making sense? So anything else we don't have no business at, at, at debate about, you know, at this thing, this particular act. Yes, Omar. Yes, um, and it's important that you made that point because just as you were speaking, the situation or scenario came back to me where those persons who will be cast out from in front of Christ when they go to stand before him, one of the things that they would have claimed to have done is to cast out demons in his name. And what we have to understand is the name of Jesus is that powerful, that unsafe people who don't have a relationship with God can use the name of Jesus and get things done. Yes, and it's not blasphemy of the Holy right. Ghost. Right. That's why I'm saying, if even anything happened in my name and sin against me and so forth, I'll forgive that. But this one, and so let's go back to it and conclude so that we don't need to be even confused or debate over this thing. He says that anybody who sees the work of God happening, of casting out of somebody casting the devil out of somebody or demon out of somebody and ascribes that work to the devil that's blasphemy of the holy spirit point blank that's it he said that's why any other thing you see happen can be forgiven but this one this particular one is very particular good sister Bats, you look like you have a question you're good okay <laughs> all right everybody good so 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 we must be careful Unsaved must be careful. We must also be careful to treat the Holy Spirit with respect. Because I'm not saying those of us who are Christians are going to lose our salvation. Because I'm saying that the application to us as Christians is to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Pay him reverence and respect that is due to him. Alright? Because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one. And they protect and defend each other. Amen? All right, good. We're going to stop there for tonight. All right. Good, good, good. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, the comforter and seal until your return. And Lord, we thank you for the truth of your word for the fact that you are not a contradicting God. A God who is the same today, yesterday, and will be forever. Father, as we have gone through this, may we be strengthened in our faith. And as we start this year, may we look forward to serving you and for the walk with you to be sweeter as the days go by. We ask that you give us journey mercies as we leave to go to our places of abode. And may we continue to stand in your truth each day. And may the peace of God reign in our hearts as you receive all honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.